Okay, let's rip it. Here we go. Um, so the the Pandora Papers just leaked uh, uh, today. The story, rather, about the Pandora Papers just leaked today. They haven't leaked all the documents, I don't think. I don't think they're going to do that. But the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists uh, just released a bunch of uh, millions of documents reveal offshore deals and assets of more than 100 billionaires, 30 world leaders, and 300 public officials. You've heard of things like this before. The Panama Papers, I believe, in 2016. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But this is the biggest leak ever of financial assets of, of our public officials all over the world, um, of billionaires uh, uh, and others. Um, so this is, this is a fucking big, big story. It just, it just released this morning, and I, I was like, okay, I got to get on this. I, I want to I riff on this right away. Uh, and behind me, King Abdullah II, this is his property. It was leaked in the, in the Pandora Papers uh, this morning that this is his property worth $23 million, and he's stashing his wealth here. He's the King of Jordan. Um, and he, while his country is going through a, uh, a, lot of, a lot of bad shit, he's, uh, he's got $23 million stashed over here. Uh, I, was, I was too close to this property. I was like, I had to check it out. I got to go peep this um, because it, it's just too close not to, not to record on site here. So this is just fucking epic. $23 million behind me. Um, uh, unbelievable. So this is only, and this is, this is just tip of the iceberg. So we'll talk about, we'll, we'll dig into all this stuff. But the, uh, King Abdullah II has $100 million worth of property um, spanning Malibu, Washington, and London. Um, uh, uh, and uh, he has not, uh, he's not released. Um, and then this is bigger than, this is bigger than him. This is bigger than him. But I just happen to live pretty close to uh, one of the properties that was mentioned. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to record on site. Let's rip it. Um, okay, I'll, I'm going to dive into it because we'll talk more about that. And by the way, uh, the King of Jordan. Uh, uh, Jordan. Um, so uh, the the ICJU website, which is who who uh, headed this investigation, uh, they're based in Washington. Their website is blocked in Jordan right now, and the King has not commented uh, on matters. So suffice it to say, he's not too stoked about what's going on here. And I'm going to try to keep this episode quick. Uh, and I don't think I'm on the property line. It's all chill. Okay, so I'm going to uh, uh, I'm going to go through this. Um, uh, um, let's see here. So this is a this is a big fucking deal. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give a quick rundown on just talking through the uh, the Pandora Papers and then um, just so, some of my opinions on it. I'm not an expert on this stuff, but uh, uh, it's it's interesting. We're just gonna riff on it. Just just some of my thoughts. Uh, but I want to start with uh, uh, start with some of the facts here. Um, Branded the Pandora Papers, the cash includes 11.9 million files from companies hired by wealthy clients to create offshore structures and trusts in tax havens such as Panama, Dubai, Monaco, Switzerland, and the Cayman Islands. More than 100 billionaires featured in the leaked data, as well as celebrities, rock stars, and business leaders, including Shakira. Um, many, many use shell companies to hold luxury items such as property and yachts, as well as incognito bank accounts. There's even art ranging from looted Cambodian antiques, uh, excuse me, ant antiquities to paintings by Picasso and murals by Banksy. Um, um, uh, this, the, the secret deals and hidden assets of some of the world's richest and most powerful people have been revealed in the biggest trove of leaked offshore data in history. Um, but these, these affairs, so uh, having, you know, ha having, having different, uh, uh, different companies and, and storing wealth in different countries under different uh, companies isn't an illegal uh, in and of itself. Um, but the secret deals, uh, uh, but these affairs often amount to shifting profits from high tax countries where they are earned to companies that exist only on paper in low tax jurisdictions. So oftentimes this is using completely legal, uh, American companies do it all the time, completely legal loopholes in the tax system uh, to, to lower your tax liabilities. Uh, but uh, often it's used uh, uh, to evade taxes, which is illegal. Tax evasion is illegal. Um, but you, you're allowed to diminish the amount of taxes that you pay. I mean, we uh, individuals do it, companies do it. You want to pay as little in taxes as possible without doing anything illegal. Um, and uh, $32 trillion in assets and tax havens uh, 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 exist around the world. That's more than the entire uh, GDP of the United States, $32 trillion. Now, now all, not all of that is illicit, of course, but that is a vast, vast number. Uh, now, the question, is, the question is, you know, how illicit is that, is that all? Um, uh, uh, is that all for evading taxes? Is it all for hiding wealth? Is it all for paying paying off corrupt politicians and exchanging gifts like that, which we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about. Um, but the, 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 the Pandora Papers are going to shed more light on this. So this is very, very, very interesting stuff. And I actually saw this this morning. Uh, Edward Snowden tweeted out um, uh, an article sharing this. 
uh, and I was gonna I had a little had a little day planned, and I was like, okay, I got to riff on this and get an episode out on this. So it's Thuken Epics. So shout out to the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists. They've partnered with uh, Guardian, um, Washington Post, BBC, a bunch of other organizations all over the world. It's a consortium um, to release this data. Now you may remember the Snowden leaks, uh, w- um, uh, which uh, that was guard the Guardian, um, and I forgot the U.S. based publication. I forget, um, uh, but. Uh, th- they partnered with a bunch of publications to release the data over time. So this just hit the scene today, um, uh, uh, Sunday, October. Do you know the date? October s- October 3rd. Okay, sweet. Thank you. October 3rd. Right on. Hell yeah. Um, uh, Sunday, October 3rd. Uh, this just hit the scene, 2021. So they're going to do a slow release of – this is how it works. They do a slow release. They'll release more and more info as the – uh, uh, as time goes on, um, but we they at least they at least gave us a whole bunch right out right out the gate. So let's um uh uh let's talk about that. And quickly, the king paid um in t- 2017. The king bought a 23 million dollar property, which is right behind me, overlooking a California surfing beach through, a, and it's Point Doom right here. Uh, it's right next to Point Doom. Um, uh, he bought it through the the British uh, Virgin Islands. The king paid extra to have another B- VI company, British Virgin Islands, owned by his Swiss wealth managers, act as the nominee director for the BVI company that bought the property. So often, what you'll d- what uh, what I've read about in these uh, in these tax havens um, is that you'll you'll put the ownership ostensibly it's someone else's name that actually owns the company or owns the property that the company holds, but really you are they're just a puppet. You actually own it. So what this does is it prevents. Uh, prevents the true ownership of who actually owns it being released. And I think there's valid reasons um, for doing this uh, in some cases, but a lot of times it's to hide wealth. It's to ha- evade taxes. And, of course, uh, 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 King Abdullah II, uh, when his country's falling apart, um, uh, and it's receiving a bunch of U.S. aid, foreign aid, and he's spending, it makes you wonder, where do you get all this money to do this? Is this is this U did USA to pay for this uh, property right behind me twenty three million dollars hundred million dollars across the world this guy has in property but it's just bigger than uh, King Abdullah the uh, second Mr King I don't I don't mean to pick on you brother bad um, and I don't think I'm on your property line either um, by the way the plants look great uh, but it's just you were right by me so I had to set up okay let's keep moving um, and uh, my notes are a little scattered. I'll be straight up. I, I took them quickly. I was like, okay, I, 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 I want to get this out. Let's riff on it. Okay, there are emails, memos, and corporation records. So a lot of this is quotes from the article. Share certificates, compliance reports, and complex diagrams showing a labyrinth of corporate structures. Often they allow the true owners of opaque shell companies to be identified for the first time. The files uh, leaked to the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists in Washington. It shared across um, leaked data with select media partners, including The Guardian, BBC uh, Panorama, Le Monde and the Washington Post. More than 600 journalists have sifted through the files as part of a massive global investigation, setting up or benefiting from offshore entities. Okay, yeah. So 600, they, and they, this has been almost two years of investigation. So they've been sitting on this stuff for two years. They've been parsing and parsing and reading through all these 11 million documents, and now they're just hitting it with us now, um, which is con- right on, journalists. Thank you. Thank you for your, thank you for your service. This is fucking epic. I love it. Okay, setting up or benefiting from offshore entities is not itself illegal. In some cases, people have legitimately reasons, such as security for doing legitimate reasons, such as um, security for doing so. Um, okay, let's go on. So, uh, it talks about how for uh, for two thousand dollars or twenty five thousand dollars, you can set up a trust that, in some instances, allows its beneficiaries to control their money while embracing the legal fiction that they don't control it. A bit of paper shuffling creativity that helps shield assets from creditors, law enforcement, and ex spouses. Uh, so. Um, uh, I should also point out that there's 14 organizations all over the world. This is why this is the biggest financial leak uh, uh, in history. 14 organizations contributed uh, uh, to essentially blowing the whistle and releasing uh, data on all this stuff. Um, and in Panama Papers, was in twi- that was in 2016. That was a big leak. I remember I was in Boston. That rocked the world in 2016, spawning police raids and new laws in dozens of, and new laws in dozens of countries and the fall of prime ministers in Iceland and Pakistan. Then there were the Paradise Papers in 2017. Um, and now we have the Pandora Papers, 2021, October 3rd, Sunday. That's when this hit the scene. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of fallout. We'll see what that fallout is. This is a lot bigger than the um, the Panama Papers in 2016. Um, uh, so I think it's going to be interesting to see what, what the fallout is of this. Uh, okay, so after more than 18 months, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's go through some of the examples. So we, we've laid out we've laid out exactly what we're, uh, what we're looking at here, or rather we've laid out um, uh, a little bit of what, you know, what what the scene is. So let's go through some examples of what this actually looks like. Um, 
Uh, the files also show that Azerbaijanians ruling uh, Aliyev family has traded close to 400 million pounds for U- of UK property in recent years. One of their properties was sold to the Queen's Crown Estate, which is now looking into how it came to pay 67 million pounds to a company that operated as a front for the family that runs a country routine, routinely accused of corruption. The Prime Minister of the Czech Republic, Andrei Babis, pardon my pronunciation, but the guys I'm, you know, the people I'm pronouncing names, like, you'll be chill, who is up, who is up for election this week, and I wonder if this had to do with the timing of this release, is facing questions over why he used an offshore investment company to acquire a $22 million chateau in the south of France. He, too, declined to comment. Not everyone named in the Pandora Papers is accused of wrongdoing. The leaked files reveals that Tony and Cher Blair saved 312,000 pounds in property taxes when they purchased a London building partially owned by the family of a prominent uh, Baharini uh, minister. So it's interesting because there's different publications. I've read a few, the Washington Post, the Guardian, uh, the the International Consortium of uh, Investigative Journalists. Um, they each have their own kind of main article on this, announcing this. And it's funny because the Guardian, which is a UK-based publication, they, they say uh, uh, Tony and uh, Cherie Blair, Tony Blair was the, was the uh, prime minister of the UK from 97 to 2007. Um, and they say that the way they bill it, they're like, oh, well, it's not illegal. Like, what he's doing, he was just trying to save money on taxes. So that's the Guardian spin. And then the uh, ICJU, uh, um, ICIJ, excuse me, their story was just, th- they didn't say, oh, it's not illegal. They were just, they just lay the facts out. Now, it's looking like it's not illegal, but it's just funny that the, the, Homer, the Homer publication, The Guardian, is just trying to, you know, defend their prime minister a little bit. It's natural. It's just an interesting, uh, it's just an interesting, they didn't, po- they didn't, really care to point out any of these other people that they dragged through the mud that, oh, it could be legal. Um, uh, uh, but he- he- here's the deal of how one of, these, how one of these things works. And then we'll get into the, some of the color commentary, um, uh, which I admit is color commentary. I like to separate that stuff. There's facts, and then there's opinions on facts. Um, so uh, uh, we'll get into that towards the end, but I just want to lay out the facts so you can, you know, w- we can at least all think about this together on our own first. Okay, the former prime minister and his wife, this is uh, Tony Blair, bought the 6.5 million pound office in Marylebone by acquiring a British Virgin Islands offshore company. While the move was not illegal and there's no evidence the Blairs proactively sought to avoid property taxes, the deal highlights to a loophole that has enabled wealth property owners not to pay a tax that is c- commonplace for ordinary Britons. Okay, I love that quote. And there's no evidence the Blairs proactively sought to avoid property taxes. Let's talk about one thing. If you're rich as fuck, even if you're not, you're going to want to avoid paying tax. You're not going to do anything. You don't want to do things illegal. I'm not advocating for that, but you want to lower your taxable income call it what it is. So it's okay if they were trying to pay less in property taxes. That's fine. It's not a good look for the, the prime minister. Sure, I get that. But uh, dude, then change the laws. If you uh, Change the laws. Like you gotta, We got to change the laws. We got to prevent these loopholes. We got to close these loopholes. That's, that's the fix. It's not relying on the goodwill of people uh, to, to um, go out of their way to pay more in taxes. That's not how taxes should work. That's not a healthy way to make them work. Um, uh, so this is an interesting example. So the reason they save money on taxes is because uh, they bought the property, but they bought it with a with a uh, with a uh, with an offshore company, um, and they bought shares in that offshore company. So they didn't buy the property; th- that company owns the property. They bought shares in the pro uh, in the company that owns the property. So they didn't buy it outright. So they were able to save money um, uh, that way, which is an interesting loophole. Totally legal, but it's just an interesting way of of how this uh, how this stuff works. Um, uh, okay, by purchasing the company. Shares of building. Yeah, here we go. Also to work for. Okay, so Baker McKenzie, which is a big law firm, also to work for Joe Lau, a, non, a now fugitive financier accused by authorities in multiple countries of masterminding the embezzlement of more than four point five billion from a Malaysian economic development fund known as One MDB. Uh, so that's all. That, that's what's really interesting about a lot of this stuff is is it, it lower income countries, uh, more corrupt that they have they uh, are embezzling funds, state funds, uh, and that's what this is shining a light on. Um, uh, now it's not only lower income countries and, and corrupt governments. There's, but I will say so far, at least what we've seen, no U.S. politicians, let's say that, no U.S. politicians have been indicted in this um, and no, uh, no major countries in Western Europe. Like the, I think the Czech Republic, um, kind of some fringe, are they democracies? Yeah, they are, but call it what it is. They're hanging on the precipice. But I, I haven't seen any from your, you know, your majors, your Canada, your United States, uh, your Japan, your 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 Italy's, your France. We haven't seen any of that. Your Germany's, which that makes me feel good. But who knows? Maybe they're just better at hiding. But I uh, I like that. I like that. Okay, this is interesting. Oh, one more thing. Uh, 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 one of Putin's supposed uh, girlfriends, it looks like. Um, uh, she came into the ownership of a shell company ap- a few months after she had a baby. Uh, um, 
And the Kremlin did not respond to comment, of course. Uh, a few months after she had a baby that people think uh, uh, this was with Putin, um, she came into the ownership of a shell company that has an apartment overlooking, I think, the Mediterranean or some condo look overlooking the Mediterranean, like some insane, uh, some insane property, which is interesting. Um, okay, so <coughs> let's take a step back here a little bit, and then we're going to get into the color commentary. We're going to keep this quick. Um, uh, I like it. But um, the the okay, so what's interesting? So because uh, based on the uh, the Panama Papers and what other what was that other one? Not the not the Panama. Then there was the Paradise Papers in 2017. Panama 2016. Paradise in 2017. Um, because a lot of those loopholes were closed. What's up, brother beast? Um, the U uh, the U.S. emerged out of these out of these scandals as a leading tax haven. The file suggests the state of South Dakota, of all places, in particular, is sheltering billions of dollars in wealth linked to individuals previously accused of serious financial crimes. So this is absolutely hilarious. So South Dakota, um, looking into this a bit, I changed some of the laws to try to bring in investment um, because uh, uh, I think the politicians were duped and they were saying, oh, this will bring investment and people can, you know, it'll bring jobs. And no, people are just parking their assets there, not bringing any jobs. Maybe there's a few high paying jobs. Uh, there's some building, Washington Post uh, was recording on site. They said, there's 100 companies that have their assets here, something like that, uh, which is just interesting. Okay. The Pandora Papers also reveal some of the unseen repercussions of previous offshore leaks, which spurred modest reforms in some parts of the world, such as the British Virgin Islands, which now keeps a record of the real owners of companies registered there. At least $11.3 trillion in wealth is held offshore, according to a 2020 study by the Paris-based Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, the OECD. This is a group of rich countries. Uh, it's a club of rich countries that all, that all riff on economic things. Okay, this is money that is being lost to treasuries around the world and money that could be used to recover from COVID, Ryle said. We're losing out because some people are gaining. It's as simple as that. It's a very simple transaction that's going on here. Uh, always be careful of uh, th things that say uh, simple. People, oh, this is very simple. This is black and white. Uh, uh, Benedict Evans is a great thing where he calls things a Rorschach block, a uh, blot. You know that thing where it's like a, you know, it's like a, it's like a, looks like paint was just splattered on a, on a, on a piece of paper. It's like, what do you see? What do you see? So you see what you want to see here. So yes, you can see this as, um, uh, this is very simple. People are evading taxes, and uh, they're 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 stealing from the state, and these governments aren't getting their money. And simple as that. And we could be recovering from COVID better. Yeah. Well, a lot of these governments. Um, uh, I, I, I just think when people have the assumption that, oh, government just has more money, it'll operate better. I'm just like, really? Like, you just have more money, it'll be better. Uh, there's just, uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, you should not evade taxes. I'm not, uh, I'm not saying that, but it's just, and uh, countries shouldn't do it, but it's, but, but it's just, it's, uh, individuals shouldn't do it, companies shouldn't do it, but it's, 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 it's just, whenever you, I'm seeing people say black and white, I almost just shut down. I'm like, bro. I get it. People are making a point. This guy has a two quote. He has a two sentence quote. I get it, but I, I'm just always. It always makes me wonder. I'm just. I, I don't like looking at things that way. Okay, here we go. In December 2018, the Bahamas enacted legislation requiring companies and certain trusts to declare their real owners to a government registry. The island nation was under pressure from larger countries, including the U.S., to do more to block tax dodgers and criminals from the financial system. So that's hilarious. So the U.S. pressured. Uh, uh, the Bahamas to enact legislation to find out the real owners of companies, and then guess what? A lot of those closed up, uh, um, those little uh, tax havens. And where'd they go? They came to South Dakota, Nevada, and some other states, um, uh, which is very, very interesting. Some Bahamian uh, uh, politicians opposed the move. They complained the register would discourage Latin American clients from doing business in the Caribbean. The winners of these new double standards are the U.S. states of Delaware, Alaska, and South Dakota, one local attorney said. It's interesting. There are no solutions. There are only trade-offs. So the U.S. doing this ostensibly, it's a good thing, right? Okay, uh, w make it harder. Well, then what happened? Okay, well, then the U.S. ended up harboring more of this, uh, uh, more this, more this quiche, if you will. Um, months later, a confidential document indicated that the family of the Dominican Republic's former Vice President Carlos Morales Troncoso had abandoned the Bahamas as a go-to sanctuary for the wealth. For their new refuge, they chose a place 1,600 miles away. S what is that? Sioux, Sioux Falls? Sioux Falls, South Dakota? Unbelievable. By 2020, 17 of the world's 20 least restrictive jurisdictions for trust were American states, according to a study by Israeli academic Adam Hoffrey Winogrado. Winogrado. I don't know. That's like Russian. I don't know why I pronounced it that way. What's an Israeli accent? Uh, fuck. I know a couple of Israelis. I'm trying to think what their accent Anyway, in many cases, he said U.S. laws have made it more difficult for creditors to put their hands on what they are owed, including child support payments from absent parents. Okay. So I'll say this. I'll say this quickly. Um, here's here's where the color comes in. So there's going to be a lot of this stuff coming out. I encourage you to look it up. I encourage also you to you can read the Washington Post. You can read the Guardian. Uh, that's where they um, 
that's where uh, these are the journalist organizations that, that partnered with the International Consortium of, of Investigative Journalists. But go to the, the go to their website. I always try to go to the original source. Go to the original source if you want to read about this. Um, uh, go to the, the ICIJ website and read what they have to say. They're going to be leaking out. They are the ones uh, they are the ones running this operation. Go to the source. Don't go to someone's tweets about it. Don't go to someone tweets can be helpful. I get that, but go to go to the source. Go to what they're saying. Um, uh, it's it's uh, yeah obviously. You know, I'm not saying don't read the Washington Post. I'm sure they'll have a good take on it. But I'm just saying I, if I had to choose, I'd just go to the source. Well, they're the ones running it. Let's just see what they say. Um, uh, and plus, they have less because they're an international consortium. Yeah, I mean, they're based in Washington. But they have less of a stake, too, as The Guardian did, try to downplay or upplay certain uh, certain things about a uh, um, uh, about their own country, right? So, you know, Le Monde in France. Um, I don't think there's been any French... Uh, French stuff. I think that's that was one based in France. I'm just assuming, um, <coughs> but they've got some skin in the game to make either make their own country look worse. I think a lot of journalists try to do that, or make their own country look better. So it's just interesting. You always think of incentives here. So here's how we'll start out. Here's where the color commentary comes in. Um, now think of two extremes. One is is the government knows nothing. Um, they have no right to. Everyone's private. All their assets are private. Everything is. No one can get access to anything. Um, or the government can't get access to anything. Um, and then the other side where they know everything. Um, and they can get access, they know where every, uh, every, uh, every property you own, every cent you have, they know everything where it is. They know every single thing, uh, every, single, every single thing you've done, every single thing you do, everything you, every single thing you say. So obviously those two extremes we don't want to live in. And I use the example a lot. There's somewhere on the spectrum that we need to have. Now, here's what I will say. I don't want uh, I don't want the U.S. government and I don't, the U.S. government itself doesn't want that. Our politicians don't want that to to know where every cent is of every. I don't care how wealthy you are, how poor you are, it doesn't matter. You sh the government should not have a database of every single piece of wealth that you own, um, and where it is. We have uh, you know Fourth Amendment legal search and seizure. You don't just get to know this stuff. There's things called warrants. You have to. The government has to earn the right to get this information, um, which is uh, which I think is an absolutely healthy system, and that's how that's how we should do it. Uh, so I don't know. I just like to put these things in perspective here because uh, because it's very easy to say, oh, we need uh, government needs to be better, and then, you know we need to make this, uh, you know we need to, you know we need to give the government more resources to track uh, to track our population, and it's like okay, maybe a little bit more, but there's there, there's a balance here. And I'm not saying anyone's calling for that. I just like to put these things in perspective. And I'll tell you what, with the Snowden leaks, um, uh, uh, General James Clapper, I've brought this up a hundred times on the Green Party. He lied to he lied to the American people. He lied to Congress. He lied to the American people and said they weren't doing bulk data collection on, on millions of Americans, and they were. Uh, the Snowden leaks taught us that. Okay, so there are things that the government does, that, and they, they were wrong about that, and that had a huge fallout, particularly around encryption technologies. I think it's the reason why end-to-end -end encryption is such a hot-button thing. Um, it's kind of like the elephant in the room. It's like, why do we care if everything's end-to-end uh, -end encrypted? Yeah, well, part of it is, is <coughs> we don't want hackers to get access, but part of it is I don't want the government to be able to just listen to my uh, listen to my communication and read all my messages i'm sorry i don't um and as uh as apple said they pushed pretty hard on the fbi in some uh, in some ways on this they said the the government has more data than they've ever had to be able to put criminals behind bars just because they don't have your text messages doesn't mean they don't have all, all this other wealth of fucking data um uh okay so uh also also as 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 some of the writers uh pointed out and some of the writing on this not all of this stuff is illegal so it's important to just because uh Shakira has a has a company that uh, you know it's like okay let's 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 relax or just cuz a billionaire has has a has a uh has a uh a wealth management company that that involves that does some of these transactions for him or her to actually purchase properties or move things around. Uh, it's not necessarily it's not necessarily illegal. If we don't want to make it illegal, we we can talk about the tax code. That's a, that's a worthy conversation. But I think I think it's very easy to say to look at this and say, oh, billionaires billionaires are evil, rich people are evil, all politicians are corrupt. Well, actually, the fact that the the fact that this came out, we're shining light on this. We can talk about it now. So don't throw the whole system out. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Okay. Um, so I think a lot of times people are like, oh, this proves like, look at this. Everything's corrupt. Everything's corrupt. Everything's corrupt. Really. Uh, everything's a strong word. There, there's, there's, a, there's always a balance with this stuff, um, and and tax laws are different in every country and are extremely fucking complicated. So, and I don't pretend to know anything about taxes, um, but I will say, in my own business, I have a, I have a, I have a small business, an SMB. I'm a small business owner, um, co-owner. Um, we have a, a totally legal, weird setup 
for um, our own business where we have um, uh, uh, we have a couple LLCs that actually own the business, right, outright, um, uh, and we own those LLCs. Um, and this is all public. This is like you can look this up. You can see who owns what LLC. This is all public. But uh, we do this, and th th that LLC files is what's called an S corp. Um, so we each have an LLC, me and my co-owner, and then that has the relationship with our main company, Full Send Solutions. If you need any software help, hit us up. That has the main relationship with Full Send. Our LLC does, and when that LLC files an S corp, and we save ten percent on taxes. Okay, that is a legal thing recommended by our accountant. He's a great guy. He's totally above board. Um, uh, but this is a legal thing. It's weird. I don't know why, w really why it works, but I'm going to do it because I want to pay less in taxes, of course. Now, now there's another side of this. You want to pay less, but you also don't want to, you don't want to fucking evade. That is fucking illegal. So what, and, and I, I personally, I don't mess with this at all. Like, is there anything even close? I'm like, we're not deducting that. If it's even close, I'm like, fuck that. We're not going to deduct it. I don't want to get audited. I don't want to be a dick. We, we we could I think deduct some things and we don't because it's like I don't want to get audited and let's it's not about saving an extra thousand bucks it's about there's other things you can spend your time on especially at our size so I'm not acting myself I'm not saying I'm a saint because I want to save I want to pay as little taxes as possible but um, that's just the reality of the situation we all have incentives and that's the reality of the situation um, but I'll say this um, uh, the it makes sense to me that the United States, it's, it, it's no coincidence, I always think about this free, and William Ariel uh, Durant, some epic famous historians, they have a book, um, uh, got it, uh, uh, just uh, a brief hit, like it's like a, something, got it, super short, fuck, what's it called? Fuck, I forget what it's called, but it's super short, it's like a whole 5,000 years of civilization in like 100 pages, if that. They really, uh, dent uh, um, uh, they really get into a fucking, short packs a punch and it's epic and one of the things they talk about is freedom and equality will always be or actually this wasn't in this book this was in something else they wrote but the freedom and equality will always be at odds and i think about this a lot um because if you have total freedom um you're uh, you have total freedom um uh equality is going to diminish now uh, imagine a case <coughs> where the government um uh doesn't allow anyone to be richer or uh, less poor than anyone everyone is equal um that's less freedom now imagine a, a government where the rich don't pay taxes, they don't do, they don't get to, you know, they get to, well actually a government that does that, that's the thing, a government that does that where the rich don't pay any taxes and the, and the poor um, get screwed consistently um, and uh, there's completely total corruption, that's also, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily call that freedom, but it's an interesting thing to think about, um, that freedom and equality will always be at odds. So to me, my, my, it's a long way of saying it makes sense that the United States, which is the most prosperous country in the world, it's the greatest experiment in civilization of all time. And I, I truly believe that. It's the only country that by 2050 will not have a majority. This is a melting pot. It's an ex experiment of cultures. It's an experiment of, of freedom. It's an experiment of business. an experiment of human ingenuity. It's an amazing thing. Now, uh, I'm not saying uh, we don't have things to learn from other countries. I'm just saying that um, you know, we hit the scene in, in, in the 18th century a um, few colonies, and then within a couple short hundred years, by just having rule of law, uh, f private property rights, freedom for people to do what they want, start businesses, uh, start businesses the way they want, and transact with each other the way they want, we create the most powerful nation in the world. Um, and God bless our allies in other Western democracies uh, and Eastern democracies, of course, that 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 that, that uphold the classic liberal ideals of 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 freedom and individual rights. So. I'm a big fan of uh, I'm a big fan of humanity before I'm a big fan of the United States. I just think the United States is a great lever. Plus, I'm American, so a bit of a homer. But plus, I do think the United States is a great lever at which to move humanity forward. Um, and I think we need our allies to do that. And I think we need to, uh, for example, band against uh, band together against China. Work with them on some things like climate change, but band together uh, together on other things um, to to put pressure on them. Put pressure on Russia too. We need to work with our allies. But I'll say it's just no mistake that a country that 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 allows and takes uh, very seriously the privacy of their citizens um, is going to be also one of the most prosperous. Uh, it, 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 it's no mistake. Now, I'm not saying, I, I think we should, uh, uh, I'm, not, like, I'm not saying that, oh, you know, y we should make it super easy for people to, to evade, uh, uh, evade taxes and store wealth and all these, you know, these fake shell corporations. I'm not saying that, but what I am saying is that it, it it's it's freedom is necessary for prosperity and, and, and privacy is necessary for prosperity. You're not going to invest in yourself, invest in a country that you think is going to uh, 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 get uh, get control of your information, use it against you, 
um, uh, make you, you know, uh, as we've seen the pressure that's put up, uh, been put on Jack Ma in China. China, Jack Ma's got no, he's got no secrets. He's got no secrets. I think it's actually a beautiful thing. With the Chinese government, they know everything, where everything is. Um, now, that's, a, that's too far on the other extreme. I think it's a beautiful thing, actually. It's a good separation of church and state. Who can balance the powers between private citizens and government? I think it's a beautiful thing that that um, that uh, the United States government doesn't know where every single you know doesn't have a catalog of every single rich person's assets. That's an infringement on rights. That's not how this needs to work. Now, if now if an investigation needs to be done, or 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 because uh, there's evidence, there's evidence that something is going on. Then yes, we need to invest. We need to investigate. Uh, people all up and down the uh, the economic ladder, p- particularly rich people, because that's where that's where the a lot of this uh, uh, a lot of this a lot of this stu- stuff is happening. But um, I always just like to think about this and put this stuff put this stuff in context. It is hilarious that the that the repercussions of uh, uh, the the Panama Papers um, and the Paradise Papers, the U.S. And as we've been pushing, and as Biden recently has been pushing, oh, we we got to close these tax loopholes. And then the U.S. right under our nose in these states is uh, is actually harboring uh, uh, has become kind of the new the new hotness to harbor uh, uh, um, harbor assets and uh, uh, evade um, um, prevent governments from understanding where where the assets of their citizens are located. Uh, so I just think it's a uh, I think it's I think it's an interesting thing. So okay, this was this was epic. Um, I appreciate uh, appreciate you listening all the way to the end. This is this will be uh, we're just scratching the surface on this. There's 11 million documents. I spent a couple hours researching and reading. I want to get this out, uh, but you're going to be seeing a lot of stuff about this uh, uh, again on site. King Abdullah II of Jordan. This is his property behind me. 23 million dollar property. This guy has, um, and it was leaked in the in the Pandora Papers again by the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists. Uh, we did a little uh, we did a little research. Uh, uh, um, to find out where exactly this place was, um, and I was like, okay, we we got to drive up. Uh, uh, me and my girlfriend were back. We got to drive up. We got to peep it. Um, she's the one that found out exactly where it was. I'm like, okay, we got to peep this. This is gonna be chill. Um, I'm gonna I'll set up record in front of here, and I bet no one lives here, dude. I don't think anyone lives here. There's, it's just a you know he's just storing storing wealth while his country's suffering. Well, Jesus. So I'm surprised there's not a bunch of protesters out here. Unbelievable. Anyway. Um, uh, King Abdul II. Good luck with this fallout, brother beast. Um, thanks for uh, thanks for giving my uh, uh, podcast a good view. Um, uh, if you want to, uh, yeah, this podcast is available. Search No Gradient uh, wherever you get your podcast. It's also available on YouTube. If you search Dick Lucas on YouTube, uh, uh, you'll find you'll find this episode as well. You'll find the video version of it. I always publish uh, the video version um, uh, on YouTube uh, as well. Um, uh, and then also post the audio version on podcast for all for all my shows. Okay, thank you so much for listening. This was who can happen. Wait, I actually want to see. There's someone here. I want to. I want to actually talk to them. Excuse me. The uh, the president of Jordan uh, of Jordan owns this property. It was just leaked today. Yeah, and he's he, well, it, it, he's trying to hide his wealth here. So anyway, I just thought you should know the, the Pandora Papers. Look it up. Th- that's Larry. She said it was interesting. I don't. Oh, I don't know if you heard that. Oh damn, that audio is probably. Anyway, um, okay, that was hilarious. I just had to tell her. I've told a few people walking around. This is hilarious. Anyway, thanks for listening. Dick Lucas on YouTube. No gradient wherever you get your podcast. Thanks so much. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed Sunday. And good luck to all the journalists that worked on this, everything. Excited to see what else comes out of this. Mwah.